the warmest of greetings to you. I am your storyteller, Chip, and you know if I asked you who is the king of the jungle, most people would say the lion. lion. Yeah, but if you asked the lion in the jungle, he would say, "Oh, king me? <laughs> no, no. If you're looking for the king lion, you need to go to the African savanna. Yes, there are." No king lions here in the jungle. Ask any animal in the Indian jungle, and they would tell you who is the real king of the jungle. <coughs> you see, a long time ago, there was a leopard in the jungle called. Tendue, and he really loved eating. He loved it more than anything else, and he would eat a lot. For breakfast, he might have a monkey, and a red panda, and a pangolin. And he would find these animals, and he would catch them like this. Swoosh! He would. Claw them like this, swipe, and he would eat them like this, chomp, chomp, chomp. And then for lunch, he might have something bigger, like an elephant, or a rhinoceros, or even a lion, and he would catch it like this, swoosh, and claw it like this, swipe. Yeah, that's it, just like that. And he would eat it like this, chomp, 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 just like that. And then for an afternoon snack, he might have an antelope, or a bison, or a python. And he would catch them like this, swoosh, and claw them like this, swipe, and eat them like this, chomp, chomp, chomp. And at the end of the day, for dinner, he might like to have an extra little snack, like like a duck, or a hare, or possibly a crocodile. And he would catch them like this, swoosh, and he would claw them like this, swipe, and he would eat them like this. Hum, hum, hum. He was so greedy; he would eat all of these animals and. Even if he couldn't finish them, he would hang their bodies in the trees so that he could finish them later. And what this meant was the jungle started to look really, really untidy, get really, really messy. You see, because he'd been eating the bison, which are like the cows that you find in the jungle, and because he'd been eating the antelope, which are like the deer's that you find in the jungle. There weren't any animals to eat the grass, so the grass was getting really, really long. And because he'd been eating animals like the elephant, and animals like the rhinoceros, and animals like the loris, which is like a monkey with really big eyes and really long arms, well, they're really strong arms. That's right. These were the animals that liked to eat the leaves in the trees. And because there weren't so many of them, the trees were getting really, really heavy, and they were falling over. But because Tendwe had been eating all of the monkeys and the and the red pandas and the ducks, well, there weren't any animals to go around and spread the seeds so that new trees could grow. And not only that. Because Tendwe had been leaving all of those stinky dead animals hanging up in the trees, there were lots of flies buzzing around all over the place, and the animals that liked to eat the bugs, like the red pandas and the pangolins, well, they weren't around to eat them because Tendwe had been eating them as well. So the jungle was beginning to die. The whole jungle was beginning to die, and that's why at the start of this story, Elephant decided they needed to do something drastic. They needed to do something quickly to save the jungle. 
And after there had been a big rainstorm, so that Tenderway would hide, because Tenderway, like a lot of leopards, really, really didn't like water. Elephant sounded a big trumpet noise to call all of the other animals to a meeting. Do you know how to do an elephant trumpet noise? Yeah. Let's try it now. <laughs> and all of the animals came to hear what Elephant had to say. And Elephant said, my friends, the jungle is dying and it's all because of Tenderway and his greedy appetite. But Monkey interrupted and said, what can we do? What can we do? Animals like the red panda and Lois and me, we're, we're too small. Animals like you, elephant and rhinoceros, you're big, but you're really, really slow. And OK, bison and antelope, they're about the same size, but they don't have the right teeth for fighting. One of those other animals was bison and, and bison had big horns and was looking at lion and crocodile really, really nervously and saying, well, well, lion and crocodile, they have the right teeth for fighting. Why don't they fight Kenderway? But lion said, it's no use. Tenderway has been eating all of our food too, so we hardly have any muscles at all. Elephant quietened everybody down with another big blast of her trumpet. Want to give it a go? <laughs> and said, it's okay. I have a plan. Although I don't think you're going to like it at first. It will save the jungle. Listen. And after Elephant had finished describing her plan, she was right. None of the animals really liked it at all, but they all understood it was for the good of the jungle. And so, last of all, Elephant gave another big trumpet blast. <laughs> and called Tenderway the Leopard to the meeting. And when Tenderway the Leopard arrived at the meeting, he thought it was the best lunch ever. All of the animals had just come for him to gobble them up. But Elephant quickly said, Tenderway, we have a problem. The jungle is dying. That's not my problem, said Tenderway. My only problem is what I'm going to have for lunch. And I'm looking at you, antelope. But Elephant quickly said, oh, no, 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 no. It's exactly the same problem, Tenderway. Because you see, if the jungle dies, well, then you have nowhere to go for lunch. You will have to go into the next jungle along where you will meet other big cats like Tiger. And that made Tenderway stop for a moment because he felt fairly safe in his jungle with all of the animals that he could catch and swipe and eat. But other big cats like like the big tiger, or maybe even the lion on the savannah. Well, that made Tenderway stop and listen. An elephant said, here's what we propose. Every single morning, we will choose an animal with straws. The animal with the shortest straw We'll go and meet you by the mahua tree and you can eat them. Just one animal a day coming to you for you to eat. Because you won't have to chase us, you won't need that much energy. So you will be able to eat just one animal a day and survive. But if you do this, the jungle will live and everyone, including you, Tenderway, everyone will live. Well, when Tenderway heard this, he thought for a moment. And then he said, 
Okay, I will agree with you on two conditions. First, you need to send me three animals. One for me to eat. Two to give me a wash. Because if I'm just going to be lazy and not using any energy around the mahua tree, I'm going to need I'm going to need someone to come and and give me a nice clean so I don't get all stinky and smelly. And three, if I'm not going to get to chase you around the jungle, what am I going to do for fun? So I need to have a third animal to come along and tell me a story or or sing me a song. Well. Elephant looked around at all of the animals, and all of the animals were nodding and agreeing that that sounded reasonable, didn't it? One animal to eat, one animal to clean, and one animal to tell a story or or sing a song. Fair enough. So then, elephant asked Tenderway what the second condition was, and the second condition from Tenderway was, "You had better not be late. If any one of you is a second past midday." Then the deal is off, and I will eat all of you, and the jungle will have to die, and it will be your fault. Well, elephant said, "Don't worry, we will not be late. We all want the jungle to survive." And with that. They all went their separate ways. Most of the animals went to their home, while Tenderway went to the big mahua tree, just down by the edge of the river, waiting for the first animal to come along for his dinner. And the very next day, the animals chose who was going to be who using straws. Have you ever done that before? Have you ever used straws to choose things? Yeah. Yeah, I've got some straws here, so you can see how it works. You you get some straws, and they're actually all different sizes. You see, there's a long one, there's a short one, and there are other straws in between. And what you do is you hold them, you mix them up, and then you hold them so that nobody can tell which one is which. And then you offer them to people to pick. Pick one. That's it. Pick one. And after the animals had picked their straws, they held them up. Can you hold up your straws for me? Thank you. And the one with the shortest straw was Monkey. <laughs> Monkey was going to be eaten that day. The one with the next shortest straw, hold them up, was <gasps> next shortest straw was Red Panda. Red Panda was going to have to go and give Tenduay a clean, getting under those nice sweaty armpits. Yeah, and giving him a nice clean. And the one with the next shortest straw. That's it. Hold them up. Um, oh, the one with the next shortest straw was Pangolin, who was going to have to go there and tell Tenduay a story. Or sing. Or sing. All of these animals. Were able to get through the jungle really, really quickly. The big bumpy, hilly land of the jungle, with all of those trees and all of that big grasses. All of these animals could get through there really quickly. Monkey was able to swing through the trees like this, and Red Panda was able to claw through the grasses like this, and Pangolin was able to scurry through the grasses like this. And they all got to the giant mahua tree well before midday. None of them were late. And when Tendue learned that he was going to be eating monkey, he caught monkey like this, swoosh. He clawed monkey like this, swipe, and he ate monkey. Chomp, 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 chomp. And then Red Panda. Got some water and started to clean out those sweaty armpits, and all the while, Pangolin started to tell Tendue a story. And this was how it went on for the next day as well. The animals all gathered together, and they picked their straws. So let's see. Would you like to pick one? That's it. Obviously, Monkey couldn't take one. 
but the other animals could. There we go. And then they held up their straws, and the one with the shortest straw this time, the one with the shortest straw this time was Duck. So Duck <laughs> was going to go there and be eaten. And the animal who was going to be doing the cleaning this time was, oh, elephant. Which might be quite easy for the elephant because they can get the water, can't they, in their trunk and then squirt it under his armpits. And the animal who was going to be telling a story or singing a song was, oh, pangolin again. And so off they went through the jungle. It was really easy for Duck to get to the Mahua tree because, of course, Duck could swim along the river. It was really easy for Elephant to get there as well because Elephant had those big stompy legs. And it was really easy for Pangolin to get there because Pangolin could scurry through the grasses. And when they got there, Tenderway found out it was Duck he was going to be eating. And so he caught Duck, swoosh, he clawed Duck, swipe. And he ate duck. Chomp, chomp, chomp. And then he let Elephant clean out the sweat from under his armpits while Pangolin sang another song or told another story or maybe even did both. But then came the third day. On the third day, the straws were mixed up and they were dished out among the animals. Each. There we go. And the animals held them up. And the animal with the shortest straw was Loris. That creature that looks a bit like a monkey with really big eyes and really long arms. And the animal who was going to be doing the cleaning this time was Python. It's going to be a snake getting under the armpits. And the animal who was going to be telling a story or singing a song was Crocodile. Crocodile was going to be having to tell a story or sing a song. So, off went the animals to get to the Mahua tree. And Python and Crocodile actually found it was quicker to get to the Mahua tree by going in the river. Snakes and crocodiles, they find it really quick to swim. They weren't going to be late. But Loris, well, remember how Loris had really big eyes? He spent most of the time under the trees in the jungle so that the sun didn't get in his eyes. In fact, he preferred coming out at night time. So when he came out from the trees to get down to the river, the light was so bright, he found it really difficult to see. And, and he was getting disoriented, he was getting dizzy, he was spinning around and tripping over branches and bumping into the little mounds there in the jungle and, and he found himself with mouthfuls of grass and, and he really had no idea which way he was going. Then he noticed that the sun was almost perfectly high in the sky and when it got up there it was a lot easier for Lois to shield his eyes and look and see the Mahua tree. But if the sun was almost perfectly in the sky, that meant it was midday. And that meant Loris was late. So Loris quickly, as quick as he could anyway, scrambled through the tall grasses, just like that, to get to the Mahua tree, hoping that Tenderway wouldn't have noticed. And when he got to the Mahua tree, he saw Tenderway sitting there, but there was no python. And there was no crocodile. And Loris was really confused. He said, oh, where, where, where's python? Where, where's crocodile? And Tenderway said, oh, python and crocodile are here. Yes, yes, they're right here in my belly. You are very late, Loris. And because you are late, you know the deal. Now I have to eat everybody in the jungle. The whole jungle is going to die. And it's all your fault. So I'm going to start with you.
and Loris. Loris was thinking really, really quickly, and before he even knew what words were coming out of his mouth, he said, but, but, but it's not my fault, it was the other leopard. Well, that did make Tenderway pause for a moment and say, eh, the other leopard? What, what other leopard? You're being silly, I'm the only leopard in this jungle. And, and Loris, again, before he'd really thought it through, said, oh, oh, I, I just happened to meet another leopard while I was coming over here. I did, yes, and, and, and I told him that I was coming to see you, the, the leopard of this jungle. I, I did, I did, and, but, but do you know what he said? He said, you must be a really weak and pathetic leopard if you have to have your food actually walk up to you. And, and I said, no, 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 it's not that. He's trying to save the jungle. But, but, but he said, oh, no, I've, I'm going to be the king of this jungle now because your leopard is so weak and pathetic. Well, as I'm sure you can imagine, Tenduay did not like hearing this. And he fluffed up all of his fur and he said, no leopard is going to take my crown as king of the jungle. Take me to this leopard. I will sort him out and I will prove that I am the king of this jungle. Well, Loris wasn't expecting that reaction from Tenderway, but what could he do? Tenderway now expected him to take him to another leopard. So all Loris could do was say, okay, follow me. And off he went, away from the Mahua tree along the river with Tenduay following behind him, just like that. And as they went along, Loris was trying to catch up with his thoughts to, to find out what he was going to do now because he had this great big leopard behind him wanting to have a fight with another leopard, a, a leopard that didn't actually exist because Loris had just made him up as a story to, to try and save the whole of the jungle. And as they were going along, Tenduay said, Hurry up, Loris! Where is he? And so again, before Loris even knew what words were coming out of his mouth, he saw a cave down by the river and he said, ah, he, he's, he's in there, he's in there. Well, Tenderway leapt over Loris and went prowling down to the cave by the river. And as Tenderway went into the cave, he looked around and sniffed. He couldn't smell another leopard. But <gasps> when he looked down onto the floor of the cave, he saw it. Another leopard looking right back up at him. And Tenduay snarled. And the other leopard snarled at exactly the same time. And when Tenduay roared, the other leopard roared at exactly the same time. And Tenduay knew that this other leopard was really wanting a fight. So he got ready to charge into battle. He was a little bit nervous because, well, Tenduay had some pretty big muscles, but that other leopard seemed to have some pretty big muscles as well. And Tenduay was pretty large from having eaten lots of animals, but that other leopard was pretty large as well. But then Tenduay realized he had an advantage. He was higher up, so he would be able to jump down on the other leopard. He had gravity on his side. He would land on top of the other leopard and that would help him to win the fight. So he got ready to pounce. And have you ever seen a cat getting ready to pounce? They get really low and they wiggle their bottoms. That's it, just like that. They wiggle their bottoms. And Tenderway got ready to pounce on three. One, two. Three! And as Tenderway pounced, the other leopard pounced at exactly the same time. It's his mother. Exactly the same time. You've got it. The other leopard was, in fact, 
Tenderway's reflection. It was an exact copy of Tenderway on the water at the bottom of the cave. It was like a puddle at the bottom of the cave. And when you look at water, sometimes it does look a bit like a mirror, doesn't it? So Tenderway had actually been looking at himself the whole time. And do you remember why Tenderway didn't go to the meeting when it was in the rain? He didn't like water, did he? When Tenderway landed in the water, he didn't know how to swim and he was thrashing about wildly and calling out for help. But Loris had already gone. Loris had already gone back to tell the other animals what had happened. And you know, nobody really knows what happened to Tenderway after that. Maybe he never got out of the water. Maybe he did get out of the water, but he felt really silly and embarrassed and left. Who knows? But this story is the reason why all of the animals in the jungle will tell you Valoris is the real king of the jungle. Even today, other animals in the jungle, even those big ones like the lion and even the leopards that you still find in the jungle, they won't eat a loris. And the loris gets to move nice and slowly through the jungle. In fact, most people call him Slow Loris, with his really big eyes and his really strong arms. He is the real king of the jungle. I love that story because I'm a big animal fan. Thank you so much for sharing it with me. But do you know what? I'd really like to know what you thought of the story. So please look for where it says review and follow the instructions to, well, do just that. Let me know what you thought of it. And while you're there, why not have a go at our epic challenge? If you send your creativity to me, I might have some very special gifts for you. By the way, the leopard isn't the only animal that got a bit greedy in the jungle. And if you are an epic explorer, you can find a bonus story right now that tells you what happened to the tiger when he got too greedy. If you're not an epic explorer yet though, go to fablespodcast.co.uk to find out how to become one. Right now though, it only remains for me to say cheerio and I hope to hear your story soon. So. Cheerio! And I hope to hear your story soon.